Hi there, and welcome to a new type of tutorial that we're going to be doing here on the channel. Uh, this actually has uh, much less to do with some of the traditional things that we've done, uh, like just painting or terrain tutorials. Uh, this is actually going to be a tutorial on using a program called Inkscape, um, just like landscape except with ink. And this is the program that we use to design all of our MDF uh, and uh, acrylic laser cut kits. Now, uh, we use uh, Laser CNC to do these types of kits and projects, and um, we need essentially vector files for that machine to trace with the laser. Now, up to now, we've been designing all of our own kits, and we've uh, collaborated with a few of our clients to do some custom projects and things, but what I'm hoping to do with this set of tutorials is to put the tools in your hands to make your own kits, design your own tokens and templates and all kinds of other fun things uh, and have us cut them for you. Now some of you may already have lasers out there and maybe this will just be uh, beneficial for you on your own or maybe you're just interested in doing graphic design and this might be uh, just a good general intro to using Inkscape uh, which is free and you can download it at inkscape.com the uh, or dot org I'm sorry inkscape.org the link for that will be in the description. Um, it is compatible with Windows. Uh, I think XP and later should be fine, uh, but I know that most of you will probably have Windows 7 and 8, um, and also Mac OS and some Linux distributions. So, uh, my, my plan is to uh, just introduce you to the program in this video, and in subsequent videos, uh, we'll be going into some of the techniques that I use on a regular basis to design the kits and tokens and all kinds of other things that we cut with a laser uh, for our store. So, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop over to Inkscape and we'll see what the program looks like. <clears throat> so, uh, this is this is our general uh, layout here when you open this up. I, I believe this is uh, pretty close to what you would see um, if you were to just download it and open it up. Uh, I believe the default page size is a uh, letter, which is eight and a half by 11. And um, you've got uh, the standard array of tools out already. So uh, we're just gonna go ahead and dive into uh, setting some of our, our, our Inkscape preferences and um, we'll, we'll move on from there. Um, opening up document properties, uh, this will essentially change uh, every time you open up a new one unless you um, set templates uh, which we'll look at later uh, but for the time being you can just open up uh, document properties I like to set everything to default in inches because that's the way my brain works uh, if you are working um, or if you're, you're from uh, a country that uses centimeters uh, feel free to to change up to centimeters if that's what works best for you uh, but some of the specific measurements that I'll be using uh, when I'm talking about um, the the standard way that I do things is going to be in inches so you may have to do a little bit of conversion work there um, <clears throat> pardon me I also set the units of the page to be in inches um, and we're going to change up the size of the page uh, to match what our normal uh, plate size is uh, we use uh, 24 inch wide by 18 inch tall plates so we're going to go ahead and put that in so we put width at 24 and our height at 18 so <coughs> pardon me I got a little bit of a scratchy throat here once we've got all that done um, we can just go ahead and close that out now um, to navigate around uh, you can hold the middle mouse button down and and drag the entire page around you can also zoom in and out with the uh, minus and plus keys on your keyboard so you just keep hitting minus and it'll zoom out hit plus it'll zoom back in all right so we've got our page centered up now um, and let's take a look at a few of the other tools um, just easy to to understand stuff here on the left uh, most everything is well labeled with nice little icons and pictograms here so <clears throat> I'm going to skip a lot of the ones that I don't use uh, just because I don't necessarily find them to be helpful for most um, laser cutting 
projects. And since this is kind of what we're doing here, uh, feel free to experiment on your own. That's fine. Um, but I'm, I'm going to be focusing on showing you guys the, the tools that I personally use. Um, okay, so we've got the rectangle tool. You can just, um, it makes rectangles. You can make them of any size you want. Um, you can change them after the fact. If you come up here to uh, the, the normal arrow selector tool, you can select one of these guys and up at the top you have the width and height uh, and you can input those into inches or whatever other uh, unit of measure that, that you have decided to select. Uh, so we can say, okay, we want this to be only four inches wide and only five inches tall. And now we have this square that is four by five. Um, you can also uh, change the color and uh, some of the options about the uh, the stroke size and style as well as the fill here. Um, I just clicked down here in the bottom corner and uh, that, that opens up this pane over here on the right. Um, so our fill is currently set to no fill but we can click the solid uh, flat color and we can change it up with our RGB colors and alpha. So you can change the opacity and whatever color. You also have a few other options here. Uh, CMYK, the color wheel, uh, HSL, and I don't know what CMS is, but um, I'm sure it's just another way to, to uh, show what color it is. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna set this back to, to no fill just because we don't really ever use fills, um, except for black fills for doing um, certain types of engraving. but uh, we'll get to that later. Uh, on stroke paint, um, mine is defaulting to red right now uh, because of some setting changes that I've made, but uh, you can set it to whatever you like. Uh, and stroke style allows you to change the thickness of it. Um, I usually set everything to one pixel, so there we go. Um, <clears throat> that gives us a, a good uniform thickness on all of our lines. Not that it really matters for the laser cutting, it just helps me see them better. Okay, so we've made some rectangles. We'll get rid of those. Uh, you also have the oval tool, which um, you can work just the same way as the the uh, rectangle. And you can select it and then say, okay, we want this to be uh, three inches by six inches, make a, a three by six oval um, with the the uh, panel at the top. Uh, you can also, you know, obviously set it to just be a, a perfect circle, and uh, you can use the 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 pieces around the edge here to uh, to scale this however you want to just freehand afterwards. Um, then we have the um, the poly and star tool here, which you can set however many uh, sides or points you want on your polygon slash star, and um, you can just keep hitting the button until you get the right number. Um, and uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you also have the pencil tool, which I find useful occasionally, but it makes a pretty rough line. Uh, unless you want something to look particularly rough, I wouldn't bother with it. Um, this is a very handy tool. The um, the sort of curved line drawer, you can um, make a, a solid polygon like this, or uh, you can just leave it open. Once you get to the last point that you want to set, you just hit enter and it creates it. Um, once you are done with a path like this, you can also uh, come up here to, to get the, the node editor, which is just under the normal selector tool, um, and you can grab any of the points on this. So anytime you click with that other tool, it creates a little node. You can grab that and move it around uh, to, to make the design you want. You can also select one of the lines in between and warp that line. Uh, so you can bend it and curve it. You also have these handles that, that come into to existence as soon as you do that. Um, and it allows you to, to make curves more precisely. Um, and uh, it just gives you a little more control over that. So um, one thing to note uh, about this, if you use the node editor tool, you see that you have little diamonds everywhere. Um, if you have a square or a circle or one of the polygons, uh, if you select it with the node editor, you see that we have these little squares and a circle in one of the corners. Um, these squares allow you to change the scaling on this, and the circle allows you to round the corners. Um, you can manually adjust all of that stuff um, by selecting your square, going back to the square tool, 
and it shows the actual numbers for how much it's rounded up here. We've got um, the uh, was that 0.678 inches uh, of, of rounding on on the corners there. We're just going to zero that back out, and now we've got a perfect uh, rectangle again. Um, if you wanted to turn this into the same sort of node uh, form here, or a path as opposed to an object, you can select your object and you can come up here to the path um, menu and object to path. And now you see we have these, uh, these node corners that you can edit just like this polygon that you drew up here. Um, you can also warp the edges now and do all kinds of other things that you couldn't do before when it was just an object. All right, so this is this is essentially the the basics of drawing in this program. You also have a few other um, really important things uh, for for this this type of drawing that you'll have to grasp pretty quickly, and I'll show you those uh, right now. This is this is uh, just uh, using shapes, using simple shapes to create more complex shapes, um, and the two in particular that we're going to be focusing on are unions and um, using, I guess, the opposite of unions, which is uh, difference, there we go, union and difference. Um, so if we, we draw the square, right? And uh, let's say we wanna take a chunk out of this corner here. We wanna put a big notch in the corner. So we get our, our, other, um, our other rectangle in place where we wanna crop it away, and we can select both of them, you can either just drag your, your cursor to select both of them, or you can click one, hold shift, and then click another one. Uh, this will allow you to more precisely grab things if you've got a ton of stuff out on the, the uh, workspace. And then, uh, because we drew this one up here in the top corner second, I believe it's because it's on a, a higher uh, level, which you can, you can change with some of these tools up here. Um, right up here at the, the top, you've got lower to the bottom, lower one step, raise one step, raise to the top. Um, so you can change which is going to be cutting which. Um, let's uh, let's do a little experiment here. So we've got these two, and we go up here to path and difference, and it's going to cut that chunk out of the corner there. So if we hit Control Z to undo that, and we select this one, which is at the bottom because we drew it first, uh, we're going to raise it up to the top. Let's select our two things again and difference. So now you see it took the, the chunk out of the little one this time. All right, so what happens if we want to actually make a shape that is both of these together? Um, let's actually get ourselves some fresh shapes here. Let's, uh, let's create a snowman by drawing three circles on top of each other, just like you would if you're making a snowman. We can, we can make these bigger, smaller, however you want to. Okay, so we've made uh, our three circles and we want to merge them together so that we don't have the lines in between anymore. You select everything just like we did and we go up to path and union. And now you've made a union out of all three of those shapes. So with those two fundamental pieces, uh, you can create tons and tons of stuff. One thing to note, whenever you do a union or a difference, even if the things that you used to make the union or a difference were objects before, they are now paths. And you can see that when you use the node editing tool that everything has turned into nodes now. Uh, you no longer have any of those, um, those circles that allow you to do the, the edge beveling and you can grab any one of these, these nodes now and move them around as you like. And you can change how they're curved and all kinds of other things. So. There's our snowman again. All right, so that's some of the, the very basic things um, that you'll, you'll wanna get used to, to thinking about when you're creating a design. Um, and uh, we will pick up in the next video um, some of the, the more specific pieces of this to doing laser cutting and doing some more precision work uh, by using some of the, the tools within this program that allow you to um, to do uh, some aligning and distributing and making rows and columns of things that um, that will lead to a, a cleaner, more well-fitting project at the end. Uh, so please tune in for the, the next one where we're going to be tackling some, some more advanced techniques uh, and talking about some of the other features of the program.
Um, if you have any questions that you would like uh, to, to pose to us, um, or you would like to work on a custom project for yourself and you're not quite ready to tackle this type of thing yet, uh, feel free to email us at brushforhire.minis at gmail.com or you can just go to our website, brushforhire.com, right there on the screen uh, and send us a message through our contact page. Uh, thank you all for watching. Hopefully you got something out of this and hopefully you're interested enough to check out some of the other videos that we're going to post on this very subject. Uh, thank you all again and happy wargaming.